Nepal, boasting the beauty of the Himalayas, home to some of the world's highest mountains, its majestic landscape and rugged terrain are popular for adventure seekers. The food of Nepal is for the culinary adventure, and you don't need to travel to Kathmandu to sample the cuisine of this South Asian country. Those are momos we are making there, dumplings. Like lots of like vegetables, you know, uh, we caught in the morning time. It's, and we, we use lots of spices, herbs. Durbar Square is named for a popular place in Kathmandu where people gather. Market Square reminded Janardan Padal of his homeland. It's a square here. Why not put the Durbar from Nepal to here and combine, you know? The aroma of sweet and savory spices fill this tiny kitchen. Owner Janardan who goes by the nickname John, he says that's easier for his customers to pronounce, opened Durbar Square back in 2016. But getting newcomers to try his restaurant was pretty daunting at the time. I stand in front of the door and I talk to the people, look, whenever you order, we make it. It's really fresh food. John says there's a misconception that all Nepalese food is extremely spicy. In fact, they cater the spices to each individual's taste. We have a spice level one to 10. So five is medium, my level is eight, I sweat. I always tell my customers, look, if you want to do really spicy, go start from six. You know, eight, I, I like really good spicy. You know, the people, they cannot handle it. The most popular appetizer is the momo, steamed dumplings with a meat or vegetable filling. And what's inside the dumplings? It's a wild boar. Wild boar inside the dumplings. Yeah. The wild boar momo comes with a slightly tangy sauce that delivers a slight bit of spice at oh, number two. Oh, there's a little kick to number two. Oh yeah, number two, a little bit. A little bit of a kick. I think I could do six. Oh yeah, easy. Next up, wild boar ribs. It has uh, like four or five ribs, the small ribs and the red sauce on top. Uh, basmati rice on the underneath there. And it has lots of uh, vegetables on it. And um, uh, the wild boar is from Texas. Texas? It's real wild boar. <laughs> Other favorites include duck with sauteed vegetables, chicken, lamb, nothing is fried here. But if you need something refreshing to wash it all down, how about a Yeti soda? Lime, ginger, tamarind, sugar, a pinch of Himalayan pink salt, and club soda. In the folklore of Nepal, Yeti is like our version of the abominable snowman, like this guy. You know, the belief is in Himalayan, in Mount Everest areas, there is an animal we call Yeti. So it's really cold. So when, when you get those, you feel really cold, like there, you know? That's why we put the Yeti. So people, they love it. When you're not focused on the food, you can learn a lot about Nepal's culture. John pays tribute to his homeland, pictures, Nepal's flag, the gods of Nepal. He sells many items he brings from home. I'm really glad to, you know, uh, share with my, with my customers, you know. I, I, I really want to uh, represent, you know, Nepal. And if you want to see John strike a pose, yoga that is, he keeps his mat nearby. But John is most proud of his menu at Durbar Square, bringing the cuisine of his home to New Hampshire. When you walk into Shalimar, India in downtown Portsmouth, you're treated like family. Oh. Cheers for 30 years. Oh, definitely. You walk in these doors, we will respect you and treat you just like we would with family, and you can feel that. You can feel it in the food, in the conversation, um, in the connections. Shalimar, India is a family-run restaurant that has been serving up Indian food for more than 30 years. Some cilantro. Chef owner Harbhajan Singh takes care of the kitchen while his daughter Colbert Carr runs the front of the house. Your dad loves to cook. Oh my gosh, my dad loves to cook and he cooks from the soul. Chef Singh learned to cook as a young man in northern India where his father operated several restaurants. Now he whips up popular recipes from the Punjab region. 
chicken tikka masala is a crowd favorite with a rich, creamy, and tomato-based curry, but any recipe can be prepared dairy-free. While most Indian food is cooked with curry, curry is really a variety of spices, and each dish is spiced to enhance the flavors. Technically, everything has a curry to it, but curry isn't one ingredient that you put into food. It's made um, with many different spices mixed together. The spices don't give it the heat. It's the chilies that give it the heat. So you can hold back on the chilies and still make a dish as flavorful without the spice. Indian flatbread is called naan. The dough is placed in this round clay oven and the bread cooks on the side. The naan can be prepared many different ways. First, we sampled the garlic naan. Garlic is People good. People like it, yeah. You'll have to eat some too if we're gonna sit next to each other because, you know, the garlic. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Then there is the sweet naan. And some brown sugar. Yeah. And, and yeah. taste the brown sugar. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And you can wash it all down with this refreshing drink made with a fruit popular in Punjabi villages, mango. Other than mango, what's in it? It's a, a yogurt, mango, and some like uh, a sweetness. Yeah. And it's good for the all season. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Shalimar has undergone a transformation recently. Newly renovated dining room inside and a vibrant mural of flowers painted on the exterior. The celebration of Indian food remains as it has for the last 30 years. Being here 30 years, it's not just our hard work and dedication, but it's their love and support that has got us here. So it, it takes a village and we had a beautiful village.